you know how all Yu-Gi-Oh monsters have like a regular type, but then like some of them have like the subtypes? Things like, you know, Union monsters and Spirit monsters. Or Geminis and Toons. Yeah, so those are actually called abilities, as we found out, at least according to Yu-Gi-Oh Wiki. And we decided we're gonna take a look at each one of those abilities and rank them. Which ones are the best and which ones are the worst? Yeah, we also threw in a couple of fun ones, um, mostly LV monsters, but yeah. So we're going to be ranking the following. Spirit monsters. Gemini monsters. Unions. Toons. Flip monsters. Tuner monsters. Pendulum monsters. And two more honorable mentions at the end. Yeah, so this is obviously subjective, but we're gonna mostly be basing it off of their introduction and the support that they've gotten through the years, how viable are they today. Um, we're gonna evaluate them on a always correct and never wrong and not subjective at all tier list. Yeah, scientific. All right, let's start with spirit monsters. Ooh, spirit Knob monsters. of the White Rabbit. Yeah, I think that spirit monsters actually debuted in like Legacy of Darkness, mm -hmm. I, I wanna say. Best set of all time. Yeah, so spirit monsters, gotta say, uh, started out a little weird. I know their whole gimmick is basically that. At the end of the turn, they return the hand. Yeah, and also that typically they can't be special summoned. They've obviously made a few exceptions to that in the future. <laughs> They've definitely changed that. But um, spirit monsters, Starting out, I think I see where Konami's head was at, right? Like it's sort of, they're spirits. They show up, then they kind of go. Cause you, you know, you can't really battle a spirit. You can't destroy it. They're always just here. Yeah, so you can't really like attack it. But obviously that really sort of came at the cost of like defense, right? Cause like if you're summoning spirit monsters and then they're not there to really protect your life point. Then, you know, you're kind of left wide open, but that what made up for it where the spirit monsters typically had what, powerful abilities when they would battle or at least when they're on the field. Yeah, or at least some of them did. Oh, Obviously yeah. some were kind of middling, but there's like the really iconic ones like Yadagarasu. Asura Priest. Yeah, Asura Priest. Um, all Tsukiyomi. Tsukiyomi is really powerful. And that was a Book of Moon unsummoned. So there definitely were powerful spirit monsters. There were Most also, importantly, Yamada Dragon. Yeah, Yamada Dragon, I was gonna say, some of the high level ones. Cause uh, Yamada Dragon, what, discards your opponent's hand? Yeah, or he's the one- Or is it the one that draws? Hino Kagasuchi, I think, Hino discards. Ka yeah, Hino Kagasuchi discards, discards their hand, and, and Yamada, Yamada Dragon, Dragon, you draw cards. Yeah, you draw them, you have like five or six cards in hand. So those are sort of the boss monsters. Fun fact, I think those two are fighting on the art of... Uh, uh, what was that, last turn? Last turn, yeah. yeah like fighting. That was just the start of spirits. So they had some like meta-relevant cards and a lot of kind of eh cards. Yeah, I feel like spirits sort of went several years without getting a lot until, uh, for me, Shino Birds come to mind. I know that was like kind of the first time they gave them like a archetype. That was like the archetype, but I mean, Amano Iwato has yeah. shown up in meta games multiple That's times. That's been a good one. Another set was like the Nikitama, uh, oh, Aratama, yeah, Aratama, all of those. Sakitama's Saki yeah. another one. That was like a special summon engine, right? Yeah, that was, those first came out I think in 2014. Um, editor can probably put the set or the year or something. Mm -hmm. that those they first came out in 2014 and then like they kind of recently supported them again just last year in like Cyberstorm Access. Yep. In fact, Cyberstorm Access released a bunch of new pretty strong spirit monsters. So they have been revisited. Has it been meta relevant? Has it been meta relevant or successful? I think I'm, if I had to give a gut one, I'd say spirit monsters are less known for being good, more known for having individually good cards yeah. every, occasionally. So that's like Yadagarasu. Got to, yeah. yeah like Tsukiyomi, and then I think probably the number three would be like Amano Iwato. Amano yeah. Those are like the three that, you know, they've, They've made meta impact, but spirits like as a deck or... Cause I mean, it's hard to, the, I think the only spirit deck that made waves were the um, the wind weasels, what were they called? Um, oh, Yosenju. Yosenju. Yeah, and they weren't even spirits. Oh yeah, they would just go back to hand. Yeah, that was, <laughs> it was kind of insulting. Yosenju came out and they just functioned like spirits, but just weren't spirits. So it was- That is very strange. Kind of awkward, <laughs> but yeah. So, okay, if we had to rank spirits, where are we putting them? So spirits, I think will be on the better end of our list. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, I'll kind of look at B tier. Cause, Cause yeah, they have actually have decent cards. So B tier, I feel like is where they'll land. From. Oh yeah, we're ranking these S, A, B, C, and D. Yeah, okay, and cool. Some of these might be in the grave. Uh. Next is Union Monsters. Oh yeah. Union Monsters have a, I feel like there's a story here. Now, 
Spirits came out to like, you know, it came out okay. It was rough, but it was okay. I think Unions came out terrible. Yeah, Unions <laughs> out the gate were really awful. So Union monsters were monster specific at first. Mm -hmm. Their gimmick basically being that like have a monster and then a specific Union monster that can pair with it. They and would like just team up. Equip to it. Uh, and like it would usually give it maybe like a basic battle protection. Like if it would be destroyed in battle, the yeah, Union they pretty much like always had, instead. And then sometimes they gave them some attack stats. Sometimes it got an effect when it battled. Yeah. That was really about it. Early on, they were just so awkward. The monsters were weak. They were not impressive, I think. Um, you had to summon them first, too. Yeah, yeah, in many cases. They, yeah, oftentimes you had to get both of them on the field and to then, do like, the equip union. one to the other, and it was there just... Was, what was it? Fire and Ice Beast? Yeah, there was... Curryu and Dark... Was it Curryu and Dark Blade? Yeah, yeah. There were, there were The fact that they were specific, like, combos meant that you are working on just a razor's edge of consistency here. I mean, like, because this is kind of pre-searchable stuff. Yep, you just had to get lucky and see the cards. And and, and the payoff, like, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. The is, I do think over time began to develop more of an identity, particularly with, like, machine decks. Obviously, Kaiba had, like, X-Head Cannon, Y-Dragon Head. The XYZ guys, I think they put you, the whole union mechanic on their back and yeah. say, come on, guys, we're going to the future. And for what's worth, they weren't good. No. Yeah, they, they, they really weren't good, but they were at least, like, playable. You could play, like, a, you know, XYZ Dragon Cannon thing. And, and really, you just fuse them. You wouldn't want to... Yeah, you know, the union the part union thing. wasn't great. But at least it was, like, a functioning thing. There's also, like, those cards, like, sort of Armored Cyburn and just yeah. those miscellaneous machines that kind of have union-like effects. Um, when I think of, like, unions really taking off, I think of Machina gear frame and... Um, yeah. What is this, what's the small peacekeeper? Peacekeeper, the machine archetype. And then what they weren't good because they were unions. They were just better machines that happened to be union. Yeah, that was also around the time where they made it where like the union monster could like unequip and like summon itself to the field and that obviously could make it useful for like doing a synchro summon or just tributing mm -hmm. it or just doing you know, other things kind of opening up what you're able to do. Like, oh, well, unions feel like, you know, a, you know, feels like a pretty big B tier. B, maybe really C tier. But, but they were not done. Yeah, <laughs> then comes like where I'd say unions really got good. And we're actually they in meta deck off. A, B, Cs. The yeah. Seto Kaiba, uh, just a new Seto structure deck in 2016. What was where that? It really Assault, Buster, yeah, a Assault, Crush? Yeah, Assault, Wyvern, Buster, Dragon. A, B, and C. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously like ABC Dragon Buster, which contact fuse using them from like anywhere and could like uncontact and have like the quick effect like removal. Once again, it wasn't good because they were unions. They were just good that happened to be yeah, unions. Yeah, all the cards floated and that was cool. But they did kind of begin to double down on unions at some point, like giving cards like Union Driver. Mm -hmm. And then eventually when Lynx came out, they got Union Hanger, which... Upsetting. Had to get banned. Upsetting cards. <laughs> but I'll still count that in Union's favor. Yeah. I'd say that it's probably been like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, like zero to hero story, probably. Like, and given from where it came from to where it is now, go ahead and say it's S tier. I feel I would, like this one's our S tier. I'd call it A tier. Only I just know A? That, Something that's better? Because I think there's other things on this list that are All better right. than... All right. Well, well, I, look, I'll defer. I'll put it in A tier. I'll, I'll say A tier. Okay. Okay. So the next one is Toon Monsters. Not Tuner, Toons. Yeah, which earlier I said that I thought like Spirit Monsters were the first one, but I actually, Toons I think were the first of the like sort of abilities or subtypes. And they came out in Spell Ruler, I believe. That's where we got like Toon World and stuff like Manga Ryu Ran, Toon Mermaid, Toon Summon Skull, Toon Blue Eyes. And they came out bad. Yeah, they were rough, 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 rough. Toon World not having any effects outside of they just existing. Just existing. That, that a was a problem. Five points to activate it, man. That's like, which cool. is it was strange because Pegasus had so many effects because of Toon World, but we get the card and it basically says nothing. Yeah, <laughs> Toons, uh, they had it rough. I remember that, like you know, in some of them you had to have Toon World on the field to even summon them. Yeah. Others, like you know, or most of the early ones, if Toon World got destroyed, the Toons were immediately destroyed. They would have to like have it on the field to be able to attack. Some they couldn't tunes. attack the turn they were summoned. Yeah. You had to pay 500 to attack with them. Mm -hmm. They did have the benefit of attacking directly. 
Some tunes you could special summon, but some tunes could not be special summoned. Yeah, that was, um, that, being able to special summon them was a pretty big deal. But the ones you could special summon were all small. Yeah, it was stuff like Toon Mermaid, I think, and some of the early ones could be special summoned, and so it technically was like but like warm strategy. You couldn't attack, so... Yeah, you had a way to turn it. It's, I think that they were just literally like translating out Toon monsters into the game, and it kind of felt like they were just afraid of making them too good, so they, they added definitely did not do that. Many, many, many restrictions. Over time, though, they began to get a few uh, neat cards. There was basically like sort of two waves of major yeah. like Toon support, I would say. The first one came in, was it like kind of Dragons of Legend, I want to say, was the set? Yeah, Dragons of Legend. Dragons of Legend, um, or one of those very similar sets, where they gave stuff like, it was like Toon Briefcase, Comic Hand. We got Toon support cards. Yeah, like Toon support cards. I remember eventually Toon Kingdom came out. Like, uh, that now, was... Toon Kingdom changed the game, or, okay, it didn't change the game, it made Toons more modern. Yeah, it gave, it was, it was treated as Toon World, and so as a result, it basically became your go-to Toon World. You could search it with terraforming, mm -hmm. it protected your Toon monsters, it just overall like gave Toon World like an actual beneficial effect. It had all the effects Toon World should have had in the first place. Yeah, I remember we also got like Toon Bookmark at that time, mm -hmm. which kind of combined with a card that had actually been released earlier was um, Toon Table, Toon of, Table Contents. of Contents. It made Toons like kind of frighteningly consistent. Yeah, we got stuff like Toon Red Eyes and Toon Dark Magician. Which could actually special summon more Toon. Yeah, they would summon like more Toons out and they were actually like, you know, kind of beefy monsters as well. That was good. I remember before then, there were still decent tunes, like Toon Masked Sorcerer was one that was like, okay. It's little, but it had a good effect. Yeah, yeah, so that was like nice. So like, there were decent ones. And then later, there was another wave of Toon support. I think that's like the Toon Chaos cards. Yeah, Toon Chaos, that's where we got ago. the uh, the Harpy Lady. Toon Harpy Lady, Toon um, BLS. Yes, oh, such a... Such a great tune card. I'm not gonna say a great card in general. It's a yeah. great tune card. Really strong. <laughs> also, uh, tune page flip. I think yeah, was, was tune one page flip. So I would honestly say they have reached a point of being playable and like mm -hmm. fun. Like the, the gimmick works now. Are tunes at the same level as spirit? That's tough. That's a tough okay. one. Because. Now, tunes, unlike spirits, are more of an archetype themselves. Yeah. So, we're, we said spirits were B, right? Yes, we said spirits were B tier. Okay. Kind of our middle of the road, acceptable. I think tunes are also B. Woo! I think that they're a little bit worse than spirits, mm -hmm. maybe. Like, they, I, because there's not, like, any tune card that gets played, whereas at least spirits have, like, stuff that, you know, like... You can't tech a tune card into a Yeah, game, like, right? Sakitama Aratara can be, Aratama can be played, or, like, you know, cards like that. So, I would, I would say that tunes are B. Because... Everything is ruined for me because I really want to put unions in S. I want to put tunes in C. Okay, you want to put tunes in C? Just because if you want to play any tunes, you have to play all the tunes, and there's that means you have to deal with all the good and a lot of the bad that comes with it. So, next one is Gemini. Ooh, that's not, oh God. <laughs> yeah, this one's a, uh, this one's gonna be painful. Uh, Gemini monsters, I feel like, have truly, they've had it rough. They, the concept was cool, right? Monsters that you have to normal summon twice. Yeah, well, they're Geminis and they have like a second side to them or something. I think was supposed to be like lore-wise or flavor-wise, maybe what they were going for. Execution, awful. Monsters that require twice, twice the resources. Yeah, yeah, twice the commitment of summoning. So yeah, when you normal summon a, mon a Gemini monster, it is a normal monster with no effect. It's yep. also a normal monster in the grave. Then you can normal summon it again on a next turn. Unless you can somehow get another normal summon. Unless you can get another normal summon, you can double summon or something. Um, and it would then gain an effect. And early on, the effects were trash. Yeah, there, early on, I don't think there were any notable Gemini monsters. I think it was like just stuff like the, the Valkyrie, what is it, Black Valkyrie or something? Oh like yeah, Valkyrie the Knight. Dark Valkyrie. Dark Valkyrie, and it just like, it gains 300 attack or something when it's Gemini summon. I feel like the most notable of the early Geminis was Neos, uh, Neos Alias. Neos Alias was a big one. Some, some of the highlights for them would probably be the trio of Ill Blood, yeah. Um, Doom Shaman and Gigaplant. Yeah, Blood those and, things. Yeah, like Ill Blood and Gigaplant, for what it's worth, reached some real highs in That's competitive true. use. That like, is true. The Ill Blood, Ill Blood and like the zombie synchro strategy, and just, you know, like 
Giga Plant and a lot of plant synchro strategies. Certainly good cards. Um, or at least say good cards if you could get, if you could commit the resources to making them. Right, and, and that's probably why they were so good is because plants and zombies had the resources where they could like easily revive them from the grave, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But typically with like a regular old Gemini monster that you summon and then wait and summon again, that ain't gonna work. It's not gonna cut it. So the last real, I think, Gemini cards to release were the Chemicritters. And before that, was was that Red Eyes? Was, was Red that, Eyes got some Gemini Red elements Eyes, to and it. Then, like, and then, Chemicritters. And let me be clear, the Gemini Red Eyes support didn't make Red Eyes better. It made it more confusing. Yeah, the Gear Freed cards, some of them were like Gemini's. So, to take the Red Eyes one, I think they gave Red Eyes Gemini just to have something. And I, I have no idea why they want to do it. It just, I don't, it's, it's that typical Red Eyes thing where it gets like random support across the board and none of it really works together. I, get, I think the idea is they will still want to make Red Eyes normal monsters but have effects, and Gemini's technically do that. They kind of allow that. But boy, did it make for some weird cards. So, oh, right. I know there's that field spell Catalyst Field, which came out around that was the time with, of the. Was that with the Chemicritters? Or? Yeah, it came out like in the yeah. same set or very close. And it kind of allowed you to like do a little bit more with your Gemini monsters. Overall, that's just like that's where it ends though. Like I think that there and that was like twenty sixteen. And you know, maybe it's best it stays in twenty sixteen. Like fundamentally the problem with Gemini's is just that like they don't it's just asking for too much. A it, card that requires two normal summons was always gonna have a problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! And now the game is so fast. Yeah, and for it to just be treated as a like you know, normal monster kind of otherwise. I forgot to mention, I guess, like, Gemini's did get to use a lot of normal monster support, Swing of Memories, and, mm. like, those sorts of cards. Did work pretty well with them, but it just, in the modern day, there just has been no real sign of Gemini's. I mean, that technically makes, like, seven, eight years or whatever since they've gotten support. Yeah, I think it would take a lot of work for Gemini's to earn a place in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! They'd really have to overhaul it, and I fear that they might just lose their identity in the process. I mean, they might have to get the union treatment. Just stick it on good cards. Yeah, just stick Gemini <laughs> on good cards. And Though, how do you do that? Card. I'm not sure, since they can't have effects until they're Gemini summoned. They would probably just have to circumvent even that. Where they, they, They're they called Gemini, but they still get to have effects. And Maybe they're hand traps yeah, hand traps, or something. Grave effects. Like, Konami will find a way. Yeah, they could find a way. As for our rankings, I think this one's gonna be the first D tier. Like, D tier, but it had meta relevance in the past. I suppose you're right, and I feel like it's just, But I think it's gotta be D. It's, yeah, uh, if it's we're been living in the present, years let's, since... we should go ahead and put it in D tier. Yeah, okay, so Gemini goes in the D tier. How about flip monsters? Ooh, you know I like me some flip monsters. All right, <sighs> so flip monsters, right guys? These are monsters you set face down when they get flipped up, they get effects. Yeah. The most, I, we're talking about early Yu-Gi-Oh. Early Yu-Gi-Oh. So the most important flip monster they gave us, Man, Man Eater, Eater Bug. Bug. Yeah. Car was crazy. So I think that the fundamental idea with flip monsters was that they were allowed to have strong effects because you had to wait mm -hmm. and like commit kind of to the flip. And they oftentimes had very bad stats. Yeah, you could honestly argue that at their core, they're not that different from Gemini monsters in that like you're kind of having to commit to like a slower paced thing. The benefit though, at least of flip monsters, is that the flip summon does not count as your normal summon. It does not. So like unlike having to re-normal summon your Dark Valkyrie or whatever, mm -hmm. once your man eater bug is set, at least like you can just flip it next turn for free, or even your opponent attacks it and that flips it face up. So as sad as it is to say, Flip effect monsters are, I probably actually started out better than Gemini's did. Yeah, I think older. out the gate, flip effects were more benef more beneficial for the player than Gemini's were back then. Yeah, now we talk about you know Man Eater Bug, and I guess maybe an honorable sort of shout out goes to like Hain Hain. Right? Hain Hain, kind yeah, of similar, same, similar card. There weren't that many other great flips at the time. Most of them were awkward, and they, they wasted no time making monsters that. Had got that got effects when they were flipped, but they weren't flip effect monsters. Yeah, there's there's a few of those. It was like those sand thing. Yeah, I don't know swarm of locusts and stuff. Yeah, swarm as of well. locusts. Yeah, I, I have no idea why Konami very quickly. Yeah, they had a thing where it's like when it's flip face up, but not flip effect, and those were bad because like it, they didn't like. So sometimes it would restrict their ability to like work when they're attacked and stuff. Yeah, since so. your flip effect monster, if it gets attacked, it will get its effect. But yeah. a monster that gets an effect when flipped. If it gets attacked and destroyed, it will not yeah, get so, its effect. It was something like that. No, that was very, that was tricky. Um, other notable like flip monsters that just came out kind of throughout time mm -hmm. 
would probably be, I want to say Spear Cretan. It's It was okay. But I think that the big highlights would probably be like the Gravekeeper Spies, Raiko, Raiko Lightsword Hunter, Dekoichi, actually, yeah. the Battle Chanted Locomotive, which kind of predated Raiko and stuff. But it was actually used like in the early kind of Perfect Circle Monarch mm -hmm. decks, where like it had decent stats. And if it gets flipped, you get to draw. And it was like a better skill angel or whatever. Yeah, it felt like if you could get your flip monster to survive a turn, or even if it just had to get destroyed, you got value out of it. It felt meaningful. A lot of Gemini monsters couldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't. Um, I think that with stuff like Gravekeeper Spy and eventually it's like Super Nimble Mega Hamster, cards that just would actually summon something from your deck when they were flipped face up. Because like nowadays we have like you know our tour guides and everything that can just summon something immediately yeah, you from summon your deck. It, it's that, it's so summon back something. in the day, like hiding that powerful effect behind a flip effect monster that you have to wait for was that was sort of a good balance mechanism. And mm -hmm. they had like high defense, so that was that was pretty neat. We eventually got flip archetypes. Yeah, we've had entire flip archetypes. Some more flip based than others. True. Like shout out to um, Prediction Princess. Prediction Princess. Uh, there were crawlers. Crawlers. Sub terror. Sub terror. Yeah. Those are all flip effects, or are they monsters that get effects when they flip? No, they're yeah. The sub terrors were flip effects. Okay, monsters. okay. Just being and crawlers were too. Because Konami's weird like that. There's also ones like Shadal that benefit from being flip monsters That's and can true. like summon themselves face down although i feel like their identity doesn't feel as tied to being flip but monsters i still think that kind of makes them like the abc of flips right sort of kinda. just good monsters that happen to be flips yeah so in that way i would say uh flip effect monsters have like you know they, they, they've done all right for themselves in the modern day though i feel like you uh, wouldn't really see any flips that's where that's sadly the modern day is where it loses because i mean even shadows aren't played right now I mean, yeah they're not and there's just no flip effect monster that feels relevant i mean the best reason you could ever hope to really set a card guru control was relevant a few years ago that's as good as it gets i think and then every so often can only print some kind of crazy flip effect monster like the uh the that pot that has all the like, oh part of the effects. forbidden yeah but you know you, no one's really gonna play that or like there's like the super noble man eater bug thing like, but they're like they're fun little retrains it's never but you know usable they're stuff. not really usable but i i still think we're gonna end up placing them like decently because so, flips ne were flips weren't bad this one's a tough one we put spirits in b are flips like better than spirits? So flips are, are not good? better than spirits right now. But I think in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, flips were better than spirits. I'm gonna put them in B and we'll, we'll say above spirits. I'm with it. Okay. With it. Cool, so next we've got Tuners, because oh that's technically an ability. For some reason. So this one's like a hard one to really gauge. Cause because you can't, you can't uncouple them from synchros. Yeah, tuners don't actually have like a gimmick to themselves. They're just used to make synchro monsters. So I feel like there's a little bit less for us to say here. But I suppose if we had to, like, I mean, tuners are good. I mean, I feel like they have to go into S tier. I mean, they're always good. They're never bad. The only time they're bad is when you're pouring a deck with too many tuners. Yeah, they've had like, obviously some really big highs. Plague Spreader Zombie early on, a super good tuner. Glow Up Bulb. Glow Up Bulb. Um, Distrudo. Oh my god, I keep forgetting Distrudo was yeah. a tuner. Yeah, all cards that have like, you know, found their way into the ban list and stuff like that. Um, nowadays, a lot of cards will just get the tuner designation put on them out of nowhere. Like just, Blazing Cartesia as a tuner. Just to have combos. Yeah, or like, you know, just, so uh, in that way, I guess I'd call them an S tier. It feels like a undeserved because they aren't doing anything like, as being yeah, tuners. It's the fact that they make synchros is why they're S tier. So, but it is what it is, right? It is what tuners it is. Tuners are S tier. You guys can argue that in the comments if you want. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if I feel like they really earned it. Alright, so the next one, Pendulums. Yeah, a bit of a surprise. Mm. It's, I almost forget that Pendulum is like kind of like a subtype, but it is. It's like, it, you know, they can be in the extra deck, but they're also in your main deck. Uh, oh God, what does, what do you even say? I don't know. Pendulums? I feel like, I feel like every, we're losing everybody right now. They're like, they're, they're so mad at us for bringing Pendulums into this. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like Tuners. It's almost, it 
doesn't feel like it belongs, but we got to go through them let's all. Give them, so. Let's give them their due. I think there's still there's more to talk about with pendulums than tuners, at least. So pendulums, for what it's worth, started out kind of bad, too. Horrible. Terrible cards. Yeah, I mean, it was just those like wonky performer pals that just didn't really have... It didn't do anything. ...painful effects. Even the, the early Magician cards, like Time Gazer and Stargazer, right. like their base form ones. Just pendulums didn't do amazing. anything like useful until... Cleefort? Cleefort, yeah. Cleefort kind of. Clee. Yeah. And then they got... Then they, then they went off the complete... Rails like Pepe and Pepe, stuff. Pepe, Draco pals. Things got a hand fast. Yeah, and then I know that um, obviously they got a big nerf with Master Rule 4. Mm -hmm. But then they got a big boon when we got stuff like Electromite and like Pendulum Magician. And they hit Electromite because that was too much of a boon. Yeah, and they hit stuff like Astrograph Sorcerer, which at least has like come back. It's It's been a roller coaster with Pendulums. It has. It went from a bunch of bad archetypes to, to now we have a bunch of okay-ish archetypes, but ultimately it's all one big Pendulum archetype. It's all in one. Yeah, that's always kind of... For better or worse, it's begun to be the pendulum identity as being like the pendulum suit, where you just kind of find the best different p pendulum engines, abyss actors, a, like a little abyss actor, a little of the valent thing that can summon itself, a little supreme king gate zero, a little dash of melodious. That. Yeah, just kind of whatever you know. That's the super heavy samurai ones. Yep. And you ultimately just kind of try to make like electromite, or at least in Master Duel, you try to make electromite. Obviously, it's not in the TCG yet. Nope. Um, you say yet? Oh, you. you there is trying to say. You know. Or it's not legal in it. Maybe it'll. Anyway, <laughs> Beyond the Pendulum, that's actually a good pendulum support card that's more But it's pendulum not a pendulum. Yeah, that's true. I guess we factor it in vaguely, but. I so mean, Union we... Driver wasn't a union, but it'd be still factored in. So, this man, is where tough. Do you put pendulums? Pendulums? I, I want it. So, by the metrics that we have used to gauge other ones. Okay. Yeah. I think that Pendulum actually belongs in the S tier 2. Because it has had some really big meta highs. And in Pendulum's, all of the things on this list are one of the, probably the most played abilities in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I mean, they, they've had a tier zero deck in Pepe. They've had just dominant top tier decks in Cleeforts and Pendulum Magicians. Um, and like, even technically kind of when they were playing the like Mythical Beast, what was it? Oh, with like, Cerberus and stuff? Yeah, Mythical Beast, Cerberus, and like the Endymion cards, those were... That was, that was a strong, that was strong time too. Yeah. It, it's, you know what? It's S tier. S. Put them in S. S. There's nothing we can do about it, guys. Yeah, that's how it is. And now we move to our honorable mentions, because their inclusion is Kind of controversial. Kind of shaky. Um, one that I thought, this is this, the first, one's an old one, one's a new one. Uh, the old one is LV Monsters. And guys, if you don't know what LV Monsters are, that's fine. It means you're not in your 30s. Yeah, I would not be surprised. So LV Monsters were these sort of mini series of monsters that just LV as in leveled up. Um, examples being like Dark Mimic LV1 and Dark Mimic LV3. But also maybe more iconic ones like Sil Horus. The Silent Swordsman. Yeah, Silent Swordsman. Or Dark Lucius. Silent Magician. Yeah, so there were just the Armed Dragon level 3, 5, 7. So that, you know. It's, there is definitely, uh, it, it's not a subtype. I've always kind of been surprised that it it's, wasn't. We're, they were kind of, they were kind of an archetype uh, yeah. that... I always thought of them kind of like Pokemon. They would just evolve. Yeah, it was like but an you had to meet thing. very uh... specific requirements. Each <laughs> one would have. So some of them would just like level up in the next standby phase. Yeah, so sometimes yeah, they had to make it to like a phase, right? Live. But some of them had to do battle. Yeah, some had to like yeah, you know, like defeat something in battle, and then it'll. I think that was like Horus, hmm. the Black Flame Dragon level four did that. Um, and obviously their effects get stronger as they level up. Better stats, usually a better effect. Some highlight LV monsters actually being like the Horus line got spell and trap protection and eventually like spell and trap negation um, on the level eight one. So and cool. the Silent series had they had immunity to spells. Yeah, so you know an armed dragon could eventually like nuke your opponent's board by like discarding a card in its higher level forms. So there was definitely something there. But all LVs had to start small. Yeah. And I mean really small. Yeah, low level LV monsters typically have piss poor stats and they can't survive to even start leveling up. So typically you had to commit other cards to protect your LVs so they can get their initial level ups to actually become formidable to monsters. Start being decent. Because uh, the, uh, their higher forms were, well, they, your LVs, they had higher levels, so you have to tribute to summon those. Yeah, typically their higher forms sometimes couldn't even be summoned except by, like, their LV thing. And even oh, if they, they could, it might be, that. like, Arm Dragon level 5, where it's like you have to, like, tribute summon, and so that's kind of 
clunky. They got a few support cards. There is yeah. level up. Level modulation. Level modulation, there's level down. I'm not sure why you'd want that. And I think, I, I might be remembering this card wrong, but the one that gets like two LV monsters from the grave, shuffles them into the deck. It's like the graveyard in the fourth dimension. Oh or something yeah, like there that. was something like that. I might be, that might be a different card, but there is a, a card that does that. And that's kind of like about where it stops with them. They, Konami dropped this mechanic. I don't even know why they made it to begin with, to be honest. It's I mean, a very strange like mechanic. Evolution, like level up, man. Cool. Like, but why? <laughs> yeah. So the uh, best you can say about LV is that they have been kind of, there's, they've got spiritual successors today. You mean like relics of the past that they, that Well, okay, Yugi's new deck does use like Silent Swordsman, Silent Magician, right? That's true, Silent Magician Zero and Silent Swordsman Zero. And they do gain levels and get like more powerful effects as their levels increase. But they are not LV They're not LV. monsters. Also the um, Thunder Armed Dragon monsters. Oh yeah, I they, forgot about those. They technically still have LV in their name, I think, right? Do they? Yeah, Thunder Armed Dragon, LV, whatever. LV three, oh my five, God, seven. I didn't so, know like, about that. Technically, it's there. Now, is that deck even really good? I mean, no, it can use wind, dragon support and stuff. Tempest, I don't know. Nah. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't really function. It does still, you can run the old arm dragons with it if you are trying to have a little bit of fun. That's where it ends. Yeah, I feel like, I know it's weird, but this honorable mention has to go to D tier. Yeah, it's gotta go to D tier. Sorry, LVs. He is he just not gonna do it. So our second honorable mention is Illusion Monsters. Uh, yeah. They're not technically an ability. They're, yeah, they're a main they're a type. type. Like They came really late in the game. They were just recently introduced last year. And uh, the reason I say that they kind of have the same vibe as like an ability is because they do all share a certain effect, for most that, of them. That they cannot be destroyed by battle, nor can they destroy a monster in battle. Yeah. So basically, uh, they kind of function, I guess, like how you would imagine an illusion to work. Like you try to battle it, but you can't really actually like strike it. But also it can't hurt you. Yeah, it can't hurt you. It's a mirage. Yeah. Um, it's effects not. I always thought this this would have been cool to have as a subtype. Like something could be like dragon slash illusion or, you know, mm -hmm. warrior slash illusion. Especially since while illusion is a type, it call it's a um it calls back to the old like alignment system that Yu-Gi-Oh had in the manga and the old video game. Yeah. So it really is separate from the types that we use today. Yeah, I think that they probably would have done really well to like introduce it early on in Yu-Gi-Oh, but I think they were probably afraid of maybe, you know, you can't have a monster that can't die in battle that early in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. That might feel, feel too strong. Remember Spirit Reaper? Yeah, so I will say this. I think Illusion gets the benefit of being new. Yeah, So all Illusions are better. Like, Illusions out the gate are better than the vast majority of this list because they're modern. <laughs> yeah, you get like the archetypes, like the sort of Burfamet, uh, yeah, the, the flying the, that Chimera it? deck? Yeah, Ooh. Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast. You get, there's really nice generic ones like um, Illusion Apprentice Magician. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Apprentice Illusion Magician. I like Moto Toko or Moto Moko. It's a little like child It's like the small monster thing. that can't be destroyed and like flips up it and down. It flips and draws cards. Yeah. Is it a flip monster? Well, I don't know if it, is it a flip monster? I think, yeah, I think yeah. it flips. It hey, flips and draws a flip card. monsters are getting support Look this late that. in the video. Yeah, so I mean, um, I almost don't want to rank this because it truly isn't. It just is kind of not fair to rank it, but if you had to give it one. I mean, I, I, I feel like you gotta put them in S tier. I, I Illusions think, are strong. I, I, I think A. I a. think A because they've still got so much more support down the line that we don't even know about. That we'll probably they, put it in the territory of S. Like, they, it hasn't proven itself yet. What? Like, Illusion decks have, like, managed to scrape uh, maybe a, a couple top spots at things, but, like, it has not defined a meta yet, whereas, like, Pendulum has. Okay. And like, I mean, that's and true. unions that's have true. like defined a meta. Whereas, yeah, like, that's true. Okay, you know, you're right. right now you're right. is like it's like Red Eyes Black Dragon. It's got potential. It'll probably end up being a lot better. Than Red Eyes it's ever it's win, floor but. is like up here, while yeah. Rivals Archetype, their floor is a way down here. But okay, it's like just a. because they're yeah, we'll give it a. We'll yeah. give it. Cool, okay, so just to reiterate our final tier list, we've got in the S tier tuners. I mean, what you gonna do, yeah. right? Yeah, and pendulums. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the A tier, we've got unions and illusions. In the B tier, illusions going to S, yeah. We've got flip 
and Spirit. In the C tier, we've got Toons. And in the D tier, we've got Gemini and L. And they deserve it. Yeah, <laughs> so that was fun. That was uh, our ranking of the Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of sub-mechanic like, ability thing. Do you guys, do you agree with our takes? W would you change them? In the comments, go ahead and put in where you would rank each one of these types. Yeah. And how you think maybe Konami could just change each of these to make, make them better or modernize them? That'd be cool. Please don't do the thing where you leave one comment for every single types, right? Just try, put it all in one comment. Or do put it in separate comments. We'll take the engagement. Woo! Thanks for watching. If you want, you can check out another video that YouTube recommends for you right here. Subscribe to Team APS for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.